Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jonathan Jernigan, and in this video, I want to walk you through something really cool that I learned about called block templates. I picked this tip up at WordCamp US 2023, and it's the idea that when you create a new post, you can set blocks that are already in existence right out of the gate for a brand new post. So like if you have a CPT called case study and you or your customer just needs to fill in some data, you know, every single time for those, you don't need them to rebuild that layout every single time. You just want to provide them with the blocks to do so. That really intrigued me and it's getting closer to the idea of components, uh, kind of like we explored in the quickly stream a couple of weeks ago with Sunny. Uh, so if you're interested in components, go check that out. But for me, I've been intrigued by this idea because I thought this would be a great kind of happy medium between components and just building everything raw one by one. So I kind of got a early quick demo set up here. I'm doing this all kind of in one shot. So if there's mistakes or things we run up against, please forgive me. But I wanted to get your, your feedback on this to see if you're interested in more content and possibly a more formalized solution like creating a, a dynamic plugin around this, something that would kind of do this for you. So let me go ahead and share my screen here. And what you're looking at is a new post. And if I expand my document overview here, you can see I have a heading and a paragraph that are input automatically. So let's go ahead and just add a new post real quick so I can demonstrate. If I click on Add New here, then you can see right away I have the default title area of the post, but then I have a heading block and I have a paragraph block right away. So this is really cool because we can define the blocks that exist. And of course, these are locked. So unless a client tries really hard, they're not going to be able to delete them. And they also can't rearrange them, which is so cool. So if your case study follows a similar cadence of you know text and images and that kind of thing, this is a really great implementation to allow them the ability to do that. So what's so cool about this is it's as complex as you need it to be. So let's go take a look at WP Codebox and I'll show you how this is working. So for our basic block template here, all that we're saying with this code snippet is go check the post type and manipulate this. So if you if yours was called you know case study, you would just change it to something like that. So we'll just swap this back to post real quick. And what I've done here is said the core heading, which is the heading we just looked at, its array uh, can contain all the attributes that will manipulate the, the parameters around this. So it can be anything, um, not just level. In this case, it's the HTML tag is what this is referring to. So this is level two. If we swap this to level one, we're going to see that that headline block will automatically be inserted to our page as an H1, which is really cool. Then, of course, we have our core paragraph element here. That one's pretty self-explanatory. And then the last little attribute we have in this basic example is the template lock all. So this just means that they can't move it and it can't be deleted right here. You can see those comments from our friendly AI overlord at ChatGPT. So what I'm going to do is turn this off and then let's go enable this other one. Now, this one is far more complex. And if you're not familiar with code and you know PHP functions and arrays and stuff, this can look overwhelming. But I'll show you how I got this. It's not hard, I promise. So. What I did was in my post or my page, wherever you're working with, I went ahead and created the layout that I wanted. So I wanted it to automatically in insert a generate blocks grid element. Then in the left side, it's going to have a, an inner container set to 50% width. Then there is an image element. Then in the other container, that one's also set to 50% width. And there's two generate blocks headline elements. Um, this one's element is a paragraph tag of P. And this is a, an example where you can kind of see how the attribute names differ. So generate blocks doesn't call it type or whatever the um, the core block one was for its HTML tag. In this case, generate blocks refers to it as element. This one's not defined, so it's going to default to the generate blocks default, which is an H2. And then, of course, I have the template lock all. So now that we have this particular code snippet turned on, when we go back to our post and we add a new one, what we're going to see is exactly what I just walked you through. So now automatically there's a grid, and then there's a left side image container, and there's a heading, um, you know, H2 and a paragraph tag element here. So we could type something in here of hello world, and we could just add, you know, some short text in this block. We can grab our image, and there we go. You know, there's just not a whole lot you can do here. I guess there are some small things I need to figure out, like I can delete this image block. Um, but something that's interesting about this is that if I were to publish this and refresh, what you're going to see is this notice that says the content of your template doesn't match, or content of your post doesn't match the template. So if I reset this, 
Once it loads, it takes a second. Should be doing something. I hope. <laughs> Here we go. And huzzah. It's taking forever. There we go. So you can see something really cool about this. It restored our template and it didn't manipulate the data in these blocks over here. So if you add erroneous, you know, extra bits of data, like if you pressed enter and it added a core block and you said, you know, core text block here, that whole block is going to get deleted. But what you inserted in your other components is not. So this approach is really, really cool. Now let's go actually take a look at a different spot where we can manipulate our content, like under this page. And you can see, uh, let's go ahead and just add in a generate blocks grid. We'll set it to 50 50. We'll just put in a headline on this side. Uh, Hello world. And then on this side, I'll pop in the image. So it's a little bit different. So what I did was go over here to the code editor and I grabbed all of this, the whole thing here. And then through a little chat GPT, chat GPT prompt, what I said was, I just want you to basically manipulate this. Let me scroll back down. So right here, I said, I've created a 50-50 grid layout and just briefly described it. Can we incorporate this into our block template? And I slapped in that code that I just copied out of the code editor area. And then it says, absolutely, the block markup you provided, blah, blah, blah. That's where all the arrays come from. So if you're not you know, one to want to dig through this sort of code and you're not wanting to build all these arrays manually by yourself, you can definitely lean on ChatGPT for something like this. So this is going to go through all the different, you know, things. There are some things that you don't actually need, um, like some of these ID attributes, it's not going to be the end of the world, but there are certain things that you will kind of have to manipulate. So this is a really, really cool approach. So you can see I started to talk about Webflow components to Chat ChatGPT, because like I said, the only downside to this approach, and if we go back to our posts, I'll show you what I mean. The only downside to this approach is that if you were to go manipulate the template, it doesn't retroactively go backward and update the old posts. So if you know you change the grid orientation to a 33, 66% layout or something like that, it unfortunately does not, you know, like I said, retroactively go backward. So it's not as good as true components like you'd find in Quickly or Webflow or something like that. But I do think that this is a very viable use case and very powerful you know, piece of kit for us to, to keep in our arsenal here. So like I said, with all of this in mind, this is something that really intrigued me. I think there are practical use cases for this. However, I understand most people aren't going to want to write the code for this. So it got me thinking about making another plugin. You know, I have PyCalendar and I'm looking to build a bigger suite of plugins over the coming years. And this seems like something that could be uh, really grown and improved over time. So if that's something you'd like to see, definitely let me know in the comments below. Let me know what your thoughts are on this approach overall. Are you going to use this? Is this interesting? And you can find the code sample that I used in the link in the description below, along with more information about how to work with this in ChatGPT. So with all of that said, really appreciate your time and attention watching this, and I'll look forward to seeing you in a future video. Bye-bye.